Well, we made it everybody. The season finale of the Halo TV show just wrapped up. And so I want to go over my season one review of the Halo TV show. There were some great moments and well, some questionable moments. But if you want to know more, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. This is a show that's been in the works for one eternity later. Nine years. They've been trying to put the show out for so long. It was announced before even the release of MCC back in 2014. The show was originally announced in 2013 and it finally came to fruition, went live on Paramount Plus this year of 2022. As someone who had their heart ripped out once the Halo movie was discontinued and all the assets were thrown away and then later were kind of repackaged into District 9, I've always just wanted to see Halo live action. Damn right. And so that finally happened with the TV show. And honestly, I was really happy to get that over a movie because TV shows allow the ability to tell more detailed character driven stories compared to movies, which are more characters reacting to such crazy events in the movies move so quickly that it's very difficult to tell a coherent story within just an hour and a half. And the news surrounding the show honestly wasn't that great either, as of course we've heard development issues, and of course once they started development, then a pandemic happened, then we saw various headlines about this show with like not so great news about like, you know, the pandemic cutting it down to nine episodes instead of 12. Uh, the headline of the show where I'm saying they didn't look at the games when it came to creating the show about the games. Obviously, it's a very misleading headline. I covered it on the channel here about why that was misleading. Some key characters being changed, like Miranda Keys now being a scientist instead of a captain, officer kind of person. So a lot of questionable changes and also being not part of canon, being a completely different storyline. A lot of fans went into this going, This had better be good. So what is the main driver to the show? It's the phrase, find the halo, win the war. And that's kind of been the main driver of actions that happen within this show, for the most part. McKee with the Covenant are trying to find these artifacts. McKee, who is a plus one, when she touches the artifact, it reveals more information about the halo rings, which have the ability to, well, as we all know, end all life within the galaxy. And with the show, only McKee and Chief are the blessed ones within this show. Now this change is definitely different from canon lore where it's just any human can interact with Forerunner tech, but in the show they changed it up to where you have to be a blessed one. I don't know why, if, it, if, if you are blessed, I think it's more just a covenant term. I assume that these changes were made just to justify the character of McKee within the show. More on that later. I assume that change of blessed ones compared to just humanity in general is to justify the character of McKee in the show. And I have a reason why we have McKee rather than like any kind of covenant species. And the show really spends a lot of time uncovering the truth and backstory of Master Chief's childhood. And we see Chief come to that reality of being a child stolen by the UNSC, inducted into the Spartan program to become, you know, humanity's big savior, which again, we'll cut on that a little bit later as well. Though there were some minor changes that were made to some of these characters, some of these plot points and uh, parts of the lore. For the most part, I still feel like the show stayed rather true to what Halo is. Obviously there were certainly parts that they didn't really stay true to what Halo is. Uh, we'll cover that a little bit later in this video. But one thing they definitely stayed true to was the action. Yeah, boy. Halo, again, is an FPS game. It's known for its action. So you know that they had to deliver on that and the show certainly does. Now, there are definitely down times within the show between these action scenes, which kind of creates more of these character dilemmas. But I think that just kind of comes with some of these limitations of going live action, that doing action scenes like we have within the Halo show are crazy expensive and difficult to shoot. And oftentimes you only get one chance to get the good take. And try to capture the sci-fi world with super soldiers doing inhuman things that's pretty difficult to make it realistic or believable. And I think the show does a pretty good job of that, even with some of the more questionable CGI moments. What the hell is this? Especially episode five and nine bring the action, dude. And it's so good. And they even go first person angle in some of these action scenes, which is a cool callback to the games. But it's actually very well done. It doesn't feel cheesy or forced like we had with the Doom movie back in the early 2000s.
I mean, let's talk about maximum cheese level right there. But like I said, the action is fantastic. Just the spacing is a little too far between where it had a lot of downtime between it, which obviously action's more just kind of eye candy kind of stuff. It doesn't really progress the story forward or develop characters much more. Uh, but Halo's known for its action. It's kind of like, imagine a Terminator with less action. Like, no, you need, you need to kill stuff within the show to kind of get the feeling right. Damn right. Now we also have the characters, which are a main part of the show. It's mostly what you see within the show is character dialogue between each other. And so this really has to carry the show really well. And did they actually do the characters well within the Halo show? Yes and no. The one character I think they did absolutely perfectly. I mean like perfect adaptation to live action was Halsey. Literally every scene Halsey is in, I'm on the edge of my seat, eyes glued to the screen and just want to hear every bit she has to say because not only did they capture the character of Halsey rather well, I did think they made her a little too evil like within the show compared to what she is in the games uh, though because she seems to have a good justification why she's doing some rather questionable actions. Though the dialogue that she has does such a great job of like manipulating people in her favor to get what she wants which is typical Halsey. Yeah, typical Halsey. But it checks out. Two scenes in particular really stand out. The initial scene with Parangoski sitting around the table with the rest of the UNSC where Halsey kind of puts Perangoski in a corner where like, well, if I did all this bad stuff, it was under the review of Perangoski, so she's the one to blame, really not me. Love that scene right there. And also another one was the dialogue with McKee when she was a prisoner and she kind of comes in as like a hologram, kind of saying like, humanity isn't the problem, they're just the issue. And you see her lines kind of mirror what the McKee heard from the Covenant, but with Halsey, Kind of really interesting stuff, but it also kind of helped lead McKee back into the way of the Covenant to kind of mess things up quite a bit. Now I'll throw these two together, Miranda and Jacob Keys, because they generally have about the same amount of screen time. Miranda a bit more, and Miranda was definitely much more substantial to the story of the show than Jacob Keys. But Jacob certainly had his parts as well with the whole thing. Uh, it was definitely cool to see like Miranda being more of a scientist than an officer compared to what she is in the games. So I do feel like they captured the feel of who Miranda is rather well. Then again, Miranda from the games wasn't really that much of a character. She definitely was much more kind of surface level, like I'm the officer helping Chief get to where he needs to do kind of thing. Very purposeful within her story arc. I did like being able to go back in time and see Jacob Keys help recruit Master Chief, then Little John at the time right there, uh, to kind of get some more of the backstory behind him. And also it was really great to see towards the end of the show with Jacob Keys having to be confronted by Master Chief himself and the rest of the Spartans being like, yeah, I kind of helped facilitate the whole like stealing of your childhood thing. Sorry. And to all those affected, I want to say, we're sorry. We're sorry. Sorry. Some of the key moments with Miranda though were definitely in episode four. She got a lot of screen time kind of figuring out like the decoding the message from the Covenant kind of thing, which was originally from McKee. And also had some time to actually sit down with the Spartans and learn more about them, like that whole pet story really kind of you can tell it impacted Miranda go like wow it's not all sunshines and roses when it comes to you Spartans huh and also episode 9 with the goodbye mother line that one that one hit pretty hard now you can't have a halo show without Spartans and you had silver team in this one instead of blue team now I don't know why they didn't just have blue team in the show and they made silver team I mean because like the characters for the Spartans there that are accompanying chief don't really have that much to do with the characterization of Master Chief or they're not really extensions of him either. Though they certainly did do a good job of being, well, Spartans. Like Kai especially was a real standout on the show, especially in episode 4. You really got to know Kai as a character and she turned out to be a fan favorite because she's, well, pretty freaking awesome on top of that. I liked Vanek a lot because he's just like so no-nonsense, kind of straightforward speaking that like everything he says is pretty damn funny. Especially the gun grease in your hairline to Kai was pretty on point. I wonder if all that gun grease in your hair didn't seep down into your brain. Now, I feel like Riz was just kind of there. She didn't really provide a whole lot of storytelling. She was very kind of just straightforward, you know, to the point kind of character. Uh, maybe we'll get to see more about her within season two after kind of taking her injury. Maybe she had to come to terms with maybe having to sit on the sidelines kind of thing. Maybe we get some more time to delve into the character of who Riz really is. But we really just didn't get a chance to really get to know her at all. Though, overall, the Silver Team was a great addition to Halo, and I'm definitely looking forward to see them expanded more on with Season 2 coming around here. Now we have to talk about the other Spartan, the Rogue Spartan, Soren. And honestly, Soren? 
He's a great character. I really liked him within this show. They actually stayed rather true to Soren from the books into this TV show. So they say truth to the lore of that capacity there a little bit. Because like every scene with Soren involved was instantly made better. He literally carried all the magical scenes because like, I'll get to this a little bit soon, but like magical, everything about that was just so boring. Uh, like I said, like he absolutely carried all the scenes with Quan and made it somewhat enjoyable to watch. Uh, nothing against the actress who played Quan. Uh, I just feel that like what she was written for in the show just wasn't really well done at all. And Soren actually played a key part with Chief's character arc within the show as well, helping him question authority and helping John become his own person as well and being more than just a tool for the UNSC. I also liked how Soren, he's a good guy, but he's willing to do what it takes to get what he wants. And so it kind of like rides that line a little bit, kind of like a Han Solo type of character within this show. I definitely like that. Hopefully we get to see more of him within season two. I'm pretty sure we will. Now, if we're talking about the characters, you gotta talk about Quan. Quan Ah. Uh. Now, the whole story arc with Quan started out strong in episode one and episode two, uh, but then once you see Chief and Quan kind of part ways, well, Chief's story got more interesting, and honestly, Quan's story just kept getting more and more boring. I really felt like there was no reason to care for Madrigal at all within this show. I mean, like from what we saw, it was just like a desert planet that apparently has this one really good resource that we never really get to truly see the true potential of what that thing does. We just heard it's it's energy that the UNSC uses. Sh sure, like I guess, you know, there's other energy sources. Why is this one so important? They didn't really get into that when it comes to Madrigal. Any reason that we had to care about Madrigal? Well, that was all killed off within the first 10 minutes of the show. My biggest dilemma with the Madrigal story arc is that Venture, who is a UNSC supporter, it's put in place as like the leader of the planet, I guess, and which we want the UNSC to win and succeed within the show because we're rooting for Master Chief the whole time. But for Quan to win, that means the UNSC needs to fail. Like we want to see Quan win, but it's at the detriment of, you know, the good guys. And Venture apparently is like a super bad guy. I mean, like we've seen him like be pretty ruthless with like killing people. He just looked like a villain wearing all black and those tiny sunglasses. But I'm glad Quan got her W, but I just feel like it was completely irrelevant to the show. Because imagine if Master Chief had to go back to Madrigal and had to like get some super awesome approval by whoever's leading the planet. Now that Quan is apparently leading the planet now, I guess, Chief can go to her, get the right access that he needs to get whatever he needs to be done. That's one way to kind of tie it all back in, but they didn't do that. Now we're getting to the big three here, guys. We're gonna be talking about Cortana, which I think her character as a whole was very well done, felt very Cortana-like, especially having Jen Taylor, the original voice of Cortana, voicing the character certainly does help, but that only became because of the actress who plays Halsey had a different role at the time, so they had to bring in Jen Taylor, do some voice acting on that one. Though I will say that the visuals of Cortana, I'm not like, a super fan of. I'd much rather prefer like the Halo 2 anniversary visuals that we had for the cutscenes in that game. That's my favorite version of Cortana possible. Like I just like that really digital kind of like more like an AI kind of look where they made her look much more human-like within this show. Which I have a feeling there's probably some like psychological reason why they made Cortana look more human rather than like the digital format that we've seen within the uh, the games and stuff like that. But it's just kind of like a detail. I'm like, you know, I'm willing to look over that for the most part. But I'm really glad to see that towards the end of the show, Cortana finally does something good for Chief that Chief actually wants to have happen and Chief finally trusts her. I feel like a core aspect of Halo is that Chief Cortana dynamic that kind of working together like two buddies like going against the universe kind of thing. I will say that Cortana felt very much more like the CE Cortana while she was more just kind of like a voice within Chief's head giving him purposeful information. Not much like in Halo 2 or Halo 3 where she had much more of a character to her as well. We're kind of more quippy one-liners coming back at Chief and stuff like that. Though we certainly got a little bit of that within the show, but you know, I'm sure that characterization will develop a bit more with season two. Okay, now I have the most written about this character right here, McKee. And my biggest fear with McKee came true within this show. Oh no. My biggest concern with McKee before the show even started that I was worried that she would be basically the representative of the Covenant to the UNSC and they wouldn't really be like the UNSC interacting with the Covenant leaders like we have within the games and that basically became true. Other than shooting off alien heads, the UNSC didn't like have any kind of diplomatic talks with the Covenant in any form or another. In fact, we don't even know if the Covenant can finally like speak with the UNSC and speak English to make them somewhat relatable. I know there was a lot of backlash with 
with the character of Mickey just in the show in general before it even launched because they're like, why would you have a human adopted into the Covenant? That makes no sense when the Covenant want to completely eradicate all humans. Well, all but this one right here because she is a blessed one and so she can actually interact with the artifacts providing purpose to the Covenant to keep her alive. And also they kind of gave her a home where before she was living on like a trash planet and you know, with some oppressive guards right there. So you can kind of understand why McKee doesn't like humanity because she got you know the short end of the stick in life and basically she found a home with the covenant and they treated her properly okay i guess that makes sense i think another reason why we had mckee rather than like any kind of alien as like the representative or main villain within the show it's because of technological and timing reasons for the most part. Again, this comes with those limitations of live action. Because imagine if you had like the Arbiter, I know a lot of people were saying replace McKee with like the Arbiter or something like that. But the thing is, it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort to do it just right. One, it's very difficult for the actors to play off of each other when you have some guy dressed up in a green suit and balls wrapped around their head to be like, yeah, that's the Arbiter. Treat him with like the utmost respect kind of thing. So it's hard for actors to properly act out a scene. And also the CGI would have to be really, really good, like cutting edge, really good. Now I know that they spent $90 million on the show, so I don't know where the budget went. Uh, but I would think that would be a possibility with that big of a budget. Uh, but, you know, it's one of those things where, like, the CGI would have to be really well done. Like, top line, like, Disney level budget with, like, animators and stuff like that. Like, the best of the best to get it right. Because if it's slightly off, it's going to feel very odd and it'll take you out of the moment. And maybe because of price constraints, time constraints, they probably just found it easier to just have a human actor. It's probably the same reason why the character Wrath within the show is a human, though in the books, it's actually a jackal, which would have been really freaking cool to have in the show, but I can imagine timing, costs, and limitations for live action. But because McKee acted as like this buffer between the Covenant and the UNSC, we didn't have any of those epic moments like we had, especially in Halo 3. Contact with Lord Hood. Let him know- all of you vermin, cowering in the dirt, thinking, what? I wonder that you might escape the coming fire. Oh my God, just chills every time, man. Let's see that scene, chills. Damn right. Now we can't talk about McKee without talking about the love scene with Chief. And honestly, the whole thing just felt completely out of place. I could tell that they probably had some bigger storytelling when it comes to building up this relationship between Chief and McKee, but due to the time constraints and also cutting down a lot of episodes down to nine, I'm assuming that that story arc got completely rushed and just kind of still thrown in there. And I'm just thinking like, that was so unnecessary. I'm guessing just like having that moment of them both being on the ring just kind of gave them like a connection, I guess. Even my wife, who doesn't really know anything about Halo, she knows somewhat from me, obviously, but uh, she just thought the whole scene was like, didn't make any sense. It was completely unnecessary. Like someone going in blind to the show still can't comprehend why that love scene had to happen. And when I think of like a Halo TV show, I don't think of Chief uh, getting down and dirty. Mm. Damn right. And now, unless the show writers meant to make this a comedic effect, which I don't feel like they meant it to be, it was absolutely hilarious to me when during the love scene, they cut to Cortana just staring out, just like taking in information, going like, oh God, what's happening? His vitals are very high right now. Like I was laughing out loud. That's the most I laughed throughout the entirety of the show was in that scene because of how awkward that is. Lastly, we got to talk about the main character of the show, Master Chief. Now, I think Pablo did an amazing job as Master Chief. I think his voice was so well done where it doesn't sound like he's in, doing an impersonation of Chief. It sounds like he's doing his own Chief inspired type of voice, which I think is a proper way to do it because Chief has such a unique voice within the games that like if you tried replicating that, it would sound really cheesy. But if you kind of do it your own way and kind of lean into it a little bit more, you sound pretty good and I think Pablo does an amazing job. I couldn't imagine anybody else in acting doing a better job as Pablo for Master Chief. Of course, we saw Master Chief's face a lot within the show. Honestly, probably a bit too much. Actman put it very well in his video where he said that it's more like you're learning about John than you're learning about Master Chief. Because most of the time you're learning about like his backstory, his childhood and stuff like that, rather than 
being Master Chief and the total badass that he's supposed to be. It, it's kind of like, you know, you go into like, watching Terminator 2, right? And then like, you learn about the Terminator's like childhood being like a little baby robot or something. I don't know. Like, it, it's just not that kind of character. And I think we see Chief in civilian gear more often than we do actually in his armor set, which is kind of like, man, that's like... Why? Now, Master Chief has always been the main character, right? Like, I think if you're gonna make a Halo show, you want him as the main character, right? But the thing is, in the games, Chief also really isn't that much of a character because you're the person who's supposed to be, like, in his shoes, taking over everything, making, essentially making the decisions in a way, and all Chief needs to do within the games is provide some zippy one-liners and be a total badass. Where in a live action show, there is gonna be a lot of downtime between the action scenes because those are really expensive and hard to make. So to kind of pad things out a little bit between the action, you need to have those downtimes of what Chief, you know, having some significant dialogue, which Chief's never really had that much within the games. So the writers kind of had to flesh them out a little bit, kind of to go like, is this kind of what Chief would do kind of thing? Because Chief has always had very strong supporting cast of characters within the games, like Cortana, Johnson, Lasky, Blue Team, and etc. Like these characters have kind of been like extensions of Chief to kind of carry him through the story. But I would just like to see more Master Chief and less John when it comes to season two. Also, is Master Chief dead? Or during that time he's laying down on the ground, you hear like a flatline sound, like Chief died, and then Cortana takes over his body and becomes like zombie chief person like cortana takes him over he basically sees the matrix and just kills everything in this way which is super awesome to see very well chief like which is funny because it wasn't chief it was cortana doing it all now i was doing a bit of a watch party on my discord and people in the chat were like yeah that's probably the most chief has felt chief like within the show and it wasn't even chief it was cortana doing everything so i'm sure chief has some form of plot armor on him where he will be back in season two like we're not going to have a zombie chief throughout the entirety of season two they'll find some space magic to bring him back and everything will be fine of course without that assumption i'm like that scene was very odd and provided more questions than answers and for how crazy the halo show has gone with their plot points why not think about this what if chief since he's now apparently a digital space zombie. You know what else are space zombies? The Flood. What if Cortana gets corrupted, much like the dust that was corrupted that caused the Flood, and instead of a dust from the Primordial, it's actually the digital Master Chief is the source, Patient Zero, of the Flood in Season 2. And given some of the writing that we've had within the show, I wouldn't doubt that. You've lost your mind. Kevin from the future here, and I had to say something, I even turned the lights right on this one because it's time for a hot take. This continuing issue that I had with the show is why is Chief so important? Why is Chief a symbol for humanity? Obviously, if you've played all the games, you totally understand why he's proven himself over time and time and time again that within the games, he saved the galaxy, he saved humanity multiple times over, becoming a symbol of hope, a symbol for humanity and things like that. Now we get that same kind of feeling within the show, but what did Chief do to become such a symbol? Why is Master Chief so special within the show? I mean, we're certainly told that time and time again, especially in the beginning episodes of the series, that Chief is such an important symbol for humanity. But the thing is that before this, this is like before the events of combat evolved, right? All Chief has really done is fought against insurrectionists. And I don't really find itself being like a hero or a symbol for humanity when you're killing fellow humans. Obviously, they're like the enemy to the UNSC. I mean, they have posters of Chief all the walls within the UNSC headquarters showcasing like that he is a symbol for humanity which he hasn't really proven himself to be a good one if even one in the first place within the show okay rant back over let's change the lights but overall my opinion of the show with the highs and the lows overall it's a good time I'm definitely looking forward to season two yeah there are some questionable decisions that were made but nothing that I feel like was too immersion breaking for me to just drop the show altogether. I know we've had some diehard Halo fans I get along that side as well, but I'm willing to go along for the ride and see what they do. It still felt like Halo to me. I think the reviews that it's receiving online are rather fair. I believe right now it's sitting about 70% on Rotten Tomatoes critic-wise and about 55% fan-wise. I think 55% is a little too harsh. I mean, I kind of put it on par with like saying like the book of Boba Fett, right? Where it was like, it's a good show. I enjoyed myself. Now my ranting to everyone I know at the office at around the water cooler be like, guys, you gotta see the Halo TV show. Not exactly. No, it's more for just like your niche sci-fi fans, which it's kind of where Halo sits at right now in the public. It's just like, you know, if you really like sci-fi, check out Halo. I was expecting it to be like 
a decent show where I enjoy myself, have some fun watching, something to do on a Thursday night. And that's exactly what the show came to be. So I didn't have the highest expectations going into the show. So I enjoyed myself, unlike what people will tell you how you should feel on Twitter. Overall score wise, I'd probably give it like a six, 6.5 out of 10. That's probably what I'd rate the show. Good, not great, but a fun watch. Let me know what your thoughts are on the Halo TV show as well. Give me your ratings out of 10, guys. I'd like to see what you have in the comment section down below. Now, if you're new to the channel and missing any content from me recently, check out this playlist right here. I got a link to all my gaming news and informational videos right there. Thanks so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. Catch you all in the next one. Peace out.